Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about some horror films rather than books and I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favourite horror films from the 1970s. And yeah, as usual, these are my favourites. They're not necessarily ones I would class as the best of the decade, although I do think there is some crossover and I'm not going to rank them either. They are just going to be in chronological order in their release year. I think the 1970s was such a great decade for horror. There are some absolute classics from that era and it was quite hard putting this top 10 together. So yeah, this is what I came up with. First up from 1971 is The Blood on Satan's Claw, directed by Piers Haggard. This is set in England in, I believe, the 17th century, and there is a skull and remains that are uncovered in a field, and this sparks off a chain of strange occurrences in the local area, and the local teenagers form a devil-worshipping cult, and more strange and disturbing things take place. This is one of my all-time favourites. It is a brilliant folk horror film, so if you like that subgenre but haven't seen this one, I highly recommend it. I think it's not nearly as well known as like The Wicker Man, but for me it's definitely up there. This is one I saw in my kind of younger teenage years. It's one I remember taping off TV and, you know, watching the next day when I got home from school or something. And this one has such a great atmosphere and tone to it. Um, it does have some parts that, especially at a younger age, I found quite disturbing. There is a rape scene in here that, at the time, my first time watching it, I did really find quite shocking and not just the fact that that was taking place, but the context of it was, yeah, really quite unsettling and I still find it very effective today. This one definitely has a bit of that British kind of grim and bleakness to it, which I really like. I never hear a ton about this one, so I don't know whether it's just not as well known or maybe not as well liked, I'm not sure. If you have seen it, I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you haven't seen it, yeah, I definitely recommend it. Next up, also from 1971, is The Abominable Dr. Fibes, directed by Robert Fuest. This one is more at the fun end of horror than the previous one. It's about a man whose wife died on the operating table and he takes it upon himself to have his revenge against the doctors responsible. So he goes about this in very dramatic flair and bases each of these murders around the biblical plagues, so like Storm of Locusts, etc. It's very fun, it's very camp, it's very 70s. The style of it I absolutely love and it stars Vincent Price as the titular Dr. Fibes. He is absolutely amazing in this role, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, he does a great job acting in not your typical way, I guess, is what you would say. I had a copy of this on VHS when I was a teenager and made the mistake of lending it out to someone and never got it back. Next up from 1973 is Don't Look Now, directed by Nicholas Rogue. This is based on a short story by Daphne du Maurier and it's about a couple who have lost their young daughter in an accident and they are grieving the death of their child and they are now in Venice in Italy while the husband is helping restore a church. This one is more of your quiet, slow burn style of horror. 
it's very atmospheric, it definitely has some creepy moments as they think they keep seeing their dead daughter around the city and yeah how that part of the story plays out is really brilliant. There's also some humour to it as well and it just makes for this really kind of odd but fantastic combination. Next up also from 1973 is The Wicker Man directed by Robin Hardy and fun fact apparently this used to play as the B film to the A film which was Don't Look Now so that's pretty cool and that would make for an amazing double bill. The Wicker Man is about a police sergeant who travels to a small island off the coast of the UK to investigate the disappearance of a young girl and his investigations uncover some strange goings on by the people that inhabit this island. This for me is definitely a classic within horror and definitely one of the best folk horror films. I think if you know the ending but haven't seen the film I would still highly recommend watching the whole film because it really is wonderful. It has again that kind of British mix of a bit of humour and a bit of weirdness and then a whole lot of dark stuff going on and it makes for an absolutely brilliant film. This stars Edward Woodward as the police sergeant and Christopher Lee as Lord Summer Isle and they're both absolutely perfect for the characters that they play. This gives me a really good excuse to share my favourite joke of all time. Why does Edward Woodward have four D's in his name? Because otherwise he'd be Ewa Wooa. Okay, next up from 1974 is Black Christmas, directed by Bob Clark. This is a fantastic slasher film set in a sorority house when people are leaving to go home for Christmas. The girls in the house have been receiving some prank calls which have been quite obscene in nature and this develops into yeah, the girls being picked off. And if you haven't seen it that might sound very schlocky and cheesy and something that you've seen a hundred times before but this is an early one within the slasher subgenre that sets up a lot of the tropes that we know today. And this one also has a pretty dark edge to the whole film. It's not cheesy or schlocky at all. I like how the characters in the sorority house feel like real people and they all have their own issues going on alongside these things unfolding within the house. So yeah, that definitely helps with the believability of the story and also, yeah, kind of rooting for these characters while something sinister is going on in the background. Next up from 1975 is Deep Red, Profondo Rosso, directed by Dario Argento. This is an Italian giallo film and for me is definitely a giallo that steps into the horror genre too. This is about a character who witnesses a murder and becomes obsessed in trying to figure out exactly what happened and who the killer is. So a pretty simple setup but such a great film. I really love the style of this one and it has a fantastic score by Goblin and it definitely has some creepy moments so it's not just you know about this masked killer there is some yeah creepy horror-ish stuff going on too makes for a really great mix if you have never seen a giallo film before but are looking for somewhere to start um, I'm definitely not an expert but I have really enjoyed most of the ones I have seen and yeah I think this would be a great place to start. 
Okay, next up from 1976 is The Omen, directed by Richard Donner. This is about an American ambassador, his wife and their young son, and there are some strange deaths that occur all around this young boy, and the father then becomes convinced that he is the Antichrist. The Omen is such a classic of horror cinema in general, let alone just of the 70s, and it's one that I've seen a number of times over the years, and it absolutely still holds up. It's very gripping. There are some really creative and iconic death scenes within this film. The score is really great and definitely adds to what is happening on screen. Yeah, this one scared the pants off me when I saw it for the first time when I was much younger and I think it really holds up as being incredibly effective today. Next up also from 1976 is Carrie, directed by Brian De Palma, another classic that I'm sure most if not all of you have seen or are at least aware of. This is about a teenage girl called Carrie who is bullied by her classmates and she learns that she has telekinetic powers. Carrie's mother is very religious and keeps Carrie quite sheltered and Carrie is really wanting to not be the weird kid at school basically. One of the other girls at school takes pity on Carrie and instead of going to the prom with her boyfriend she asks her boyfriend instead to invite Carrie and yeah these factors combine to one of the most iconic climaxes in horror. Having been a teenage girl myself I can definitely relate to yeah being in high school and uh, not feeling like you fit in. It's such a great film. Again, this is one that I think the score really adds to what is happening on screen and yeah, very effective and also adds to the emotion. This is based on the novel by Stephen King and I'm not gonna lie, I much prefer the film to the book in this case. It's not too often when that happens, but yeah, there's just something about the film that gives me much more than the book does. If you have both read and seen it, I would love to know which one is your favourite. Next up from 1977 is another entry from Dario Argento. This is Suspiria. And this one is about an American dancer who travels to Germany in order to attend a dance academy there. And she soon discovers a lot of strange goings on within the academy and tries to figure out exactly what is happening. Meanwhile, some of the girls are disappearing and meeting their untimely demises. And of course eventually she uncovers what sinister goings on are happening in the academy. I love the visual style of this film. It is so beautiful and it was filmed in Technicolor so it just looks amazing. And again, fantastic score by Goblin and the story I think is really unique. Yeah, this is definitely one of my all-time favourites and one that I can watch over and over again and it doesn't get old. And last but not least, from 1978 is Halloween, directed by John Carpenter. Another of my all-time favourites and one that doesn't get old. This is about Michael Myers who, when he was a young boy, murdered his sister and for the past 15 years he has been in a mental hospital but he breaks out and comes back to his hometown and starts to kill again. While this isn't the first slasher it's definitely one of the best in my opinion and 
I think there's a lot more to the film than just, you know, characters being picked off by a masked killer. I think it's a great story with great characters and just is a really well made film. I feel like I catch new things each time I watch it which is really fun and yeah the sign of a great film that you can get more out of it uh, the more you watch it. Again another one with a great score by John Carpenter himself and yeah really adds to the film and yeah hearing that score at any time of year will give me the chills a little bit. So that was my top 10 favourite horror films from the 1970s. Let me know if any of these are your favourites too or let me know what your favourites are. I would love to hear about them. There are definitely plenty of ones that I still love but didn't quite make the top 10. There are definitely plenty of other great films from this decade. So yeah, I would love to chat about that in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!